Hello everyone, welcome back to a very special video. I'm DTM as always, and we have with us the refines and remixes for the March 2023 data mine. Yes, uh, these remixes and refines are finally out, and it was super anticipated, especially for me because I do have a plus 10 Mila that I hope can contribute a bit more to my Gale Force strategies. Uh, but we'll see about that. So yeah, let's get into this. As always, if you like the content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that jazz to help support the channel. Only takes five seconds to subscribe, but it truly does help out this channel a lot. And I really do appreciate all the constant support. So yeah, let us begin with Legendary Celica. So Legendary Celica now has Saintly Seraphine, and the base effect becomes if unit initiates combat or is within two spaces of an ally, grants attack speed plus 5 to unit during combat, and deals damage equals to 25% of foes res, including when dealing damage with a special triggered before combat. So when you compare this to uh, her previous weapon, like we still had the true damage from before, but obviously we now get attack speed plus 5, which is really nice. I'm going to assume that the dealing damage with a special trigger before combat, i.e. AoEs, is just a clarification, because I believe it worked beforehand like that as well. So just clarifying that is of course really nice. Obviously, that's just the base effect. Attack speed plus 5 is nice, but that's not all. At the start of turn, if unit is within two spaces of an ally, grants special cooldown charge plus 1 per attack during combat. So she gets special acceleration as a positive status effect if she is within two spaces at the start of turn. And also, if special cooldown count is at its maximum value, grants special cooldown count minus 1. So she just gets times pulse in her weapon. Which I guess um, really helps with the lack of slaying. This is effectively like slaying, <laughs> in a sense. Um, if unit is within three spaces of an ally, grants attack speed plus five to unit during combat. So all in all, she gets attack speed plus 10. Um, she has special acceleration as a positive status effect, which obviously does not get denied by feud or whatnot. It's basically the same thing as Fallen Ninians' uh, dance, I believe. So yeah, which is really nice. You get Times Pulse, and of course you still get the true damage. Now this is a pretty nice buff to her weapon, but by itself, I wouldn't say it's too much. What makes this really good though is when you combine it with her remixed skill, Soul Sovia 2, which neutralizes effects that guarantee foes follow-up attacks and effects that prevent units follow-up attacks during combat. So full NFU, this was there before, but the new thing is that if unit initiates combat, unit can make a follow-up attack before foe can counterattack. So if you look here at the previous Solo Sophia, um, we still had the full NFU, but the desperation effect required you to be below 75% HP. Now with Solo Sophia 2, that is no longer the case. You just need to initiate combat, and you get this. In addition, there's more things to Soul Sovia. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, inflicts speed minus 5 on foe, and reduces the percentage of foe's non-special damage reduction skills by 50%. So, she gets the speed minus 5 debuff, and dual leaves like damage reduction piercing effect, where the damage reduction is halved. Which is really nice. Um, the thing to keep in mind is that Soul Sophia is a B skill, so you can't run Special Spiral 4, which will just allow you to completely negate damage reduction instead of just having it. I personally like, obviously, the complete negation of damage reduction, and the fact that she can't run Special Spiral 4 is unfortunate. Again, like, the having damage reduction is nice, but it would have been nice to just completely bypass it. Um, we might get a mage special that can, like, negate damage reduction, but right now, we don't have that, so this being on the B is unfortunate. That being said, this is still a super strong skill. Like, full NFU and just desperation if you initiate combat is very, very strong. Like, as we can see with units like Legendary Veronica and the like. And obviously, this really helps with boosting her damage, like, getting through a lot of the tanky damage reduction units that we have currently, and obviously we do have the true damage on the weapon, which is will really help with that. So all in all, like, in combination, Legendary Celica is actually pretty good. Like, she can accelerate her special, she can run both Times Pulse in the C and in get the Times Pulse effect in the weapon, so that's minus two cooldown. So. With the special acceleration, you can theoretically run uh, four turn specials, 
or three turn specials consistently if say the enemy has guard um so like things like i don't know um what what unit like i guess we kind of draconic fang or those sorts of units those sort of specials or luna for instance now it is unfortunate that this can't really be done to pre-charge aoe's that well unless you have like a bunch of AoE support or like special cooldown support but still this is really nice and yeah overall I think Legendary Celica actually got a really good refine and remix like it works together really well and yeah super excited for her and next up we do have um, the Byleths with Creator Sword this is both for base male and female Byleth uh, Creator Sword now has the base effect as Accelerate Special Trigger. During combat, neutralizes effects that guarantee foe's follow-up attacks, prevent unit follow-up attacks, grants special cooldown charge plus X to foe, inflicts special cooldown minus X to foe on unit. If unit initiates combat or is within two spaces of an ally, grants all stats plus four during combat. To compare this with the original base effect, um, all the like non-stat effects remain the same. What's new is the all stats plus four during combat, which obviously as a more older unit, those extra stats are greatly appreciated. The refine is at the start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grants all stats plus four to unit and reduces damage from both first attack by 30% during combat, if special triggers neutralizes damage reduction effects from non-special skills, excluding AoEs. So as we can see, we get a further all stats plus 4 for a total of all stats plus 8. We get damage reduction just from the foe's first attack. I find it really interesting because I thought Violet would get something like damage, like the 40% speed-based damage reduction that just happens all the time. I mean, this isn't conditional on speed, but I think that I would rather have like Spurn in this weapon or something. It's still nice though, and obviously getting past damage reduction skills, if your special triggers is really nice. Um, I think this is similar to, I want to say Flavia, I believe? Flavia's effect? So yeah, obviously, like, you can bust down a lot of the, like, uh, damage reduction Omni tanks that we have currently. Not Lucia, though, because obviously Lucia prevents your special from being triggered, which obviously is a big downside to relying on specials triggering to get through damage reduction. But still, this is really nice, and yeah, overall, pretty decent refine, I would say. I wouldn't exactly say this makes Byleth meta, or like, the greatest unit by any means. There are definitely a lot better swords in the game right now, and I don't think this refine really makes it so that Byleth can, you know, compete with those, like, top-tier units or whatnot. But I still think this is pretty decent overall. All right, next up we have Mila, and let's see what Mila have with uh, Nurturing Breath. Grants death plus three, grants all stats plus X during combat, X being the number of allies within seven rows and seven columns centered on units times two, max six. Uh, grants all stats plus four to allies within seven rows and seven columns centered on units during combat. And then we have Dragon Adaptive Damage. So what is new to this is that the huge attack speed defense res plus X during combat as you can see here, uh, we do not, we, that just does not exist <laughs> at all. Like, all we had was the death plus three, the dragon damage reduction, and the all stats plus two support effects. Now, this um, support effect increased to plus four from plus two with the new refine, which obviously is pretty significant, it's like double the support, and it's definitely greatly appreciated. Brings it more in line to a lot of the like drive skills and other support effects we had previously. Um, obviously that's not all she got. Um, the refine effect is grants all stats plus four, this is to herself. If allies are within seven rows and seven columns centered on unit, unit neutralizes bonuses to foe's attack during combat. Allies within seven rows and seven columns centered on unit gains neutralizes bonuses to foe's attack during combat. So this is pretty interesting. Uh, keep in mind that all of these, like this neutralized bonus to foe's attack is a drive, I believe. It's not like a positive status effect. So if your units are affected by Mila's severance, um, this will not apply. So you won't get like the dull attack. And honestly, it's really interesting that it's dull attack. It's clearly meant to be used for more defensive based teams, like maybe like Omni tanks or save tank teams and whatnot. 
to help survivability. I personally would have liked um, Neutralize's bonus to like, I don't know, defense and resistance, personally for me, because that would make her better for Gale Force, trying to punch through a lot of the tanky defense units we've had. <laughs> but um, obviously, I don't think this is meant to be used for Gale Force. Like, the support and whatnot is probably meant to be for more tanking teams, which is definitely a lot more hard. Now that we have Embla in the game, that makes like tanking really difficult. So, and obviously like this attack speed defense rest plus four won't happen to units affected by the few that Severance like just inflicts on upon us. But still, I do think this is actually pretty good. Um, I can see this being very helpful in my Gale Force clears. Like there are moments when like even with Mila, like in the correct position, I would miss kills by like two or something. And having that extra like attack or extra speed or whatnot would have been really helpful. And obviously, like, you know, <laughs> that would be really appreciated to be able to meet those checks. Uh, of course, this is not all she gets. She also has her new remix skill, which is Mila's Turn Wheel 2. Um, at the start of turn, grants foe cannot make a follow-up attack to unit for one turn, and inflicts isolation and guard on foes in card and directions with defense less than units defense through their next action. So beforehand, it was just basically um, inflicting isolation, but now she herself gets Foken off make a follow-up attack, which is interesting. It only buffs herself, so I don't think it's really that useful. You don't want Mila to be a uh, uh, to tank hits, <laughs> but inflicting guard actually can matter a lot, especially when you know so many like strategies these days rely on specials. Especially if you're using this more defensively, you can deny your, the foe's defense from proccing the specials against you, or you can try to use this to, like, prevent, I don't know, random defense units with Miracle, or, like, non-hardy fighter pa Pavis, for whatever reason. I don't know. I think... I, I don't think this will matter too much, unless you're, like, playing defensively. But again, like, uh, enemy phase strategies is pretty difficult. Overall, though, I still think this is a really good um, refine and definitely very useful. And so, yeah, really pleased with that. Next up, we have Astrum, and oh boy, let's see what Mercurius is. Uh, grants attack plus 3 at the start of turn if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%. Grants all stats plus 6 to unit and allies within 2 spaces of unit for 1 turn. So this is a plus 6 visible status um, effect that she gives. I mean, that Astrum gives. And so, yeah, this is similar to, I believe, Faye, just granting all those buffs. Of course, at the start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grants all stats plus 4 to unit during combat. So this is to herself, this is to himself, um, like, you know, uh, during combat. Like, it's not visible, it's in combat buffs. So, compared to Mercurius before, like, now it's not restricted to just these, um, type of units is now restricted to just all units and it goes from plus four to plus six which is really nice i guess the additional stats in combat is nice too um the refined effect is if unit is within three spaces of an ally grants all stats plus x to unit during combat x equals four plus the highest bonus on each stat between unit and allies within three spaces so this is like the ally bonus doubler effect essentially including himself. And so theoretically, all this combined, you get like, um, like plus 14, not counting the visible buffs, to, to Astrum's stats. That's it. <laughs> like, there's no special, other special effects or anything like that. Like, all he is, is just stats. There's not even like guard or like any follow-up type effects. It's just stats. And unfortunately, that just doesn't cut it this is and it's not even like insane stats like shell this is just honestly this is really sad um astrum definitely got uh done dirty i think i don't think this will make him good unfortunately yeah very disappointing honestly like this is really bad <laughs> it's just stats there's like nothing else to write home about anyways uh, next we have is Forsyth, and Forsyth now comes with an upgraded version of Soul Lance, grants res plus 3, 
When unit deals damage to foe during combat, restores 14 HP to unit. Um, at start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grant inflicts attack defense minus 5 on foe and reduces the effect of deep wounds by 50% during combat. So compared to uh, what Forsyth had previously, um, he just had like restore 10 HP to unit. So obviously this is a pretty big upgrade. It goes from 10 to 14. You get the attack defense minus 5 or infliction and you get like the brave clawed deep wounds how having effect where it doesn't totally negate deep wounds but if you have deep wounds applied you can get seven hp to unit now uh fatal smoke is not exactly the most common skill these days even like with serpentine staff and whatnot the, like deep wounds is like nowhere to be seen it's like missing an action so I don't know how helpful this will be, but obviously for a unit that relies on healing, this is obviously really nice. The refine effect is, if unit is within 3 spaces of an ally, inflicts attack defense minus 5 on foe during combat, foe cannot make a follow-up attack, and also, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 50% at start of combat, reduces damage from foe's first attack by 30%. So you get a further attack defense minus 5 infliction, deny follow-up, and a bit of damage reduction. Um, I would have liked this to be a bit more damage reduction. For only the foe's first attack, this is not that good for a tank. I mean, obviously the idea is that you want to heal, but I think in today's meta, most nukes will be able to, like, take Forsyth out, even with the 14 HP healing. And that is, of course, assuming he can even counterattack. Like, if you think about Legendary Veronica, she won't allow you to counterattack if you misposition. And so, honestly, I'm not a big fan of this weapon refine. I don't think it's particularly that great. Um, it doesn't really help his survivability on the hit. It only increases his sustain, which is nice, but you need to survive the hits first. And then after that, you can worry about the sustain. And unfortunately, I don't think Forsyth will be able to withstand the hits in order to make use of this sustain. So... Yeah, unfortunately not a big fan of Forsyth. Still, you can probably make him work, and yeah, he can definitely be very fun, especially when he's healing for a lot of um, HP. Alright, last but certainly not least, we have New Year's Selkie with new Fox Kit Fang, and this uh, over, uh, over eager, I guess over-texted um, weapon description, double of Forsyth, but let's see what New Year's Selkie has for us. Accelerate special trigger, if unit's res is greater than foe's res, deals damage equals to 70% of difference between stats max plus 7. And reduces damage for, from attacks during combat and from AoEs by percentage equals difference between stats times 4, max 40. So all of this initially is the same as Selkie's original. Like I, As you can see, we still get the true damage and the AoE stuff. And so all of that remains the same. But of course, the base effect does have more now. Um, now, if the foe initiates combat or if the foe HP is greater than or equal to 75%, um, grants all stats plus 4 to unit during combat. So you have the little extra all stats plus 4, which is obviously really nice. Um, helps with the stat line and whatnot. And yeah, the rest is, of course, just the beast transformation effects. Now the refine effect is, at start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, grants all stats plus 4 to unit, neutralizes effects that guarantee foes follow-up attacks and effects that prevent units follow-up attacks, and if units transformed inflicts all stats minus 4 on foe during combat. So yeah, you get a further like stat infliction, so realistically you have like what? Um, plus 12 to all stats? Yeah, I guess so. Which is uh, pretty, um, pretty nuts, honestly. But um, honestly, I, I don't think Selkie will be able to stand out from like the other beast cast that we have. Don't get me wrong, the full NFU is really nice, um, and all the damage reduction is nice, but we've gotten very similar effects like previously on previous beast calves refines that honestly, for me, they're all starting to blend together. So I'm not the biggest fan of this. I don't think this will make Selkie meta or like a great unit by any means. You can definitely use Selkie and you can probably have decent results and make her work. Um, but, like, I'm not the biggest fan. So, though, I guess it's pretty decent overall. But yeah, those are the refines that we have this batch. Um, I, to be perfectly honest, this is a pretty mediocre batch besides the remixes. Um, 
I definitely think Legendary Celica is the best, probably followed by Mila, um, mainly because of my own purposes for Gale Force and the fact that I need to use Mila all the time. Obviously, I, I think you would rather have Peony, Ash, Asker, even like Dagger, honestly, over Mila when you're using Gale Force or maybe like any team <laughs> at this point. But I do think Mila definitely um, is pretty good with this refine, and you can definitely make her, you know, into a good unit that you can use in Aether Raids. Byleth, um, unfortunately, I don't think does enough to make uh, them stand out. Like, I was, like, we have Lucia, okay? Lucia is like the ultimate Red Sword Infantry right now that all Red Sword Infantries need to um, compare against, and Byleth is far from that. And yeah, everything else honestly is pretty mediocre. So we can actually look at the tier list that we have of these refines from S, aka Brave Hector tier, to Fe, aka E tier. <laughs> so yeah, I do think um, Celica is the winner of this batch. Her remix combined with her refine makes her into a very powerful nuke. I don't think she'll be meta by any means. Like I don't think she reaches the heights of Legendary Veronica or Legendary Shez or I guess even Dual Asker or units like that. But still, she can definitely work very strongly and definitely deserves A tier and is the winner of this refined badge in my personal opinion. And then in B, we have a Mila and Byleth. Mila, I think, again, even though like Embla does hurt her usage, I still think like she did get a pretty good refine, and I know that I can definitely make use of Mila. And isolation is still really good, especially to lock down dancers. So that's always very appreciated. And now you have guard as well. Um, Byleth, like obviously having tempo and a few and a bit of damage reduction does make it so that Byleth can work really uh, well. And I think of the non-legendary slash mythic units, I think Byleth is probably the best. Um, it's just that. You know, we do have a lot of Red Sword Infantries, and I don't think Byleth really cuts it above the others. So yeah, that's why these two are in B tier. And then in C tier, we have Selkie and Forsyth. Again, unfortunately, I don't think these refines are particularly that great, but you can still make them work. And then yeah, Astrum is really bad. All stats and nothing else is really tragic. <laughs> Granted, it's better than what Effie got, but like... That's not high praise by any means. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is where I would personally rank these refines. Again, pretty um, pretty tame batch, all taken into account. Um, hopefully the next month refine will be more spicy, especially with Edelgard hopefully being next. And yeah, this is not all that we have on the data mine. We do have the stats for the new heroes as well, for the special heroes. Um, we have a uh, Spring Carla with a very offensive stat line, like 45-47 is probably the highest offenses we've had so far. Like for the longest time, units were locked to like 44 speed or like 45 speed. And now we're at, and that was like for years, like three years, I think it was locked to like 44 speed. But now that gate has finally been opened, I guess. And yeah, same thing here, Triandra, 43-46. Um, as a dancer though, like, you probably don't want that because that makes Triandra easily baited. I guess that shares similar, similar, similarities to her mythic version. Um, but yeah, uh, we also have, uh, Bernadetta. Again, very offensive stat line, not that great defenses. Uh, same thing with Ash, honestly, although Ash does have pretty decent defense. Um, but still, like, overall... Um, unfortunately, he is the demote, so yeah, he's kind of like down arrival there. And then we have Michaelis rocking that bunny outfit. He loves to be here, as you can tell from his face. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't have the highest speed. Does have high defenses, but the low speed will definitely hurt. And yeah, unfortunately, I don't think Michaelis, aka Lance Flyer number 671, uh, will be able to cut it. But yeah, overall, this is the refine and data mine for this month. 
Uh, yeah, very interesting batch this time. Celica, I'm very intrigued about. Mila, I will appreciate. And yeah, let me know down in the comments what you think of these refines. Uh, which one of these are your favorite? Which ones did you think were disappointing and whatnot? And yeah, as always, if you like the content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that jazz to help support the channel. Only takes five seconds to subscribe, but it truly does help out the channel a lot, and I really do appreciate all the constant support. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and see you all next time. Bye, everyone.